Welcome to Hedgehogs Hollow, the channel for people who are passionate about hedgehogs. Apart from the YouTube channel, we have a wide array of social media platforms. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel or following us on social media, why don't you consider doing that? And if you do subscribe to us on the YouTube channel, then make sure that when you are clicking the subscribe button, that you also click the bell icon. And that'll ensure that every time a new video is uploaded and published, to the channel, you will get a notification of that happening. For many people, the concept of conservation feels like a very distant thing, something best done by parks and zoos and nature reserves, or best left to more qualified individuals, the likes of David Attenborough or Hugh Warwick. It's not something that we can necessarily easily relate to. And very often it's something that we also think of is in the realm of adults. It's not a family activity or indeed it's not something for, for kids or children to take care of. But very, very often in the realm of hedgehog conservation, it's something that can start in your backyard or within your allotment. It's something that can take place in your garden and it's accessible to everyone. It's not just for adults. The whole family can get involved. And so in this video, I'm talking to Laura Turner from the Wildlife Garden Project, an online presence of website and social media platforms where she encourages families to get involved in backyard conservation projects. So since it's Hedgehog Awareness Week, I wanted to ask her more about the projects that families could get involved in that encourage hedgehog conservation and which can help our prickly visitors right in our backyards. But I started off by asking her more about what the Wildlife Garden Project was. Laura Turner, thank you so much for joining me on Hedgehog's Hollow. Uh, joining me from Wildlife Garden Project. So could you tell me more about what is the Wildlife Garden Project and where did it come from? Sure, yeah. So um, the Wildlife Garden Project is something that I start, started about 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's at the moment, it's a, it's a website and um, we create videos, sort of video tutorials on how to do various things in your garden to attract um, wildlife and how to help wildlife. Um, so one of those videos is how to help hedgehogs. We've got mm -hmm. you know, videos on how to help reptiles and amphibians, build a bird box, grow wildflower meadows, all of these things that it's sort of ever growing. Um, but yeah, the aim is just to sort of give people um, kind of easy to follow information um, mm -hmm. on, on things that they can do in their garden to help wildlife, increase biodiversity, all that kind of thing. So that's the idea behind it. And your background is not necessarily from conservation directly. You do something completely different. So where where did your kind of interest in that type of project and starting up that type of project come from? Well, yeah, I'm from a sort of filmmaking background. So that's my day job. So the Wildlife Garden Project is something I do on the side in my spare time, which I wish I had more of. But, <laughs> that's thing. Um, but yeah, the sort of the filmmaking side of things, I, I kind of, I've always had a passion for wildlife. And I've, I used to kind of think like, well, I've, you know, wanted to, to do something to help wildlife. Um, and I think sort of film is just one of the best tools for that, for getting messages out and, um, kind of inspiring change and all of those sorts of things. And um, when I realized I wasn't perhaps gonna realize my ambitions of becoming a, you know, wildlife filmmaker, um, you know, kind of traveling the world and everything, I thought, well, um, what can I do that's sort of closer to home and that I'll have time to do? And, and that's sort yeah. of where the Wildlife Garden Project came. So I wasn't kind of even, you know, a, a gardener as such. And so that's why I very much rely on people who um, have various areas of expertise, um, and yeah, you know, use their expertise in the videos and to help write articles and things like that. And yep. um, and that's yeah, that's sort of how it all operates, really. And through all of that process, I'm sure you're actually learning along along the way. So, what are some of the things that you've learned that are really interesting and, and may not be particular to hedgehogs, but some of the things that stick out for you in in the eleven years that you've learned from your experts? Oh, crikey. I, I really don't think I could pinpoint anything, but I, I mean, I, I, I came from a place of no knowledge at all, yeah. um, you know, other than your kind of basic have, having a kind of interest in things. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I had I had no knowledge of, of gardening as such. And so absolutely everything that I know now has just been learned from from doing it and from 
talking to people and doing these interviews yeah. and, and all that sort of thing. So I don't think I could pinpoint one particular thing because it's, it's pretty much everything. Everything. I <laughs> no, I'm, I, I know. I'm putting you. I'm putting you on the spot. But yeah. one of one of your videos, one of your videos, absolutely is is to do with with hedgehogs because, uh, and it may even though it may be from some time ago, it's still very pertinent because it talks about the things people can do in their gardens and i know it's i know to be honest that it's still very popular with people watching it because it keeps referring people to hedgehogs hollow so it is it is still pertinent and it is still still kind of valuable to people it's got useful information so where have you got a particular interest in hedgehogs or was that something that you just decided you you wanted to put out there as as a piece of information I, I just think who doesn't love hedgehogs? I mean, Absolutely. I don't think you could find I don't think you could find anyone who doesn't love hedgehogs. They're the most lovable creature. Um, and I think I don't know. There's something very iconic about it, isn't it, in this country? And it's it's and I suppose because it is in decline as well, and, and it really really needs our help. Yeah. Um, and it's not one of those things that you kind of have to convince people to like. Like I know the kind of the, the you know bat charities and things have a bit of a hard time convincing people. You know, actually bats are really sweet. They're not pests with wings or whatever pigeons with wings or whatever people call them. Yeah. And they have a hard time convincing people that bats are brilliant and they're worthwhile and they're fascinating and wonderful. Everyone already loves hedgehogs. They already think hedgehogs are great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, but they really need our help and that's you know as you, as you said you know that video is really old and the um you know the the camera technology and everything about it is, it looks really dated and, and in my eyes now like not very good but um the information is still there the information is yeah. still correct and it's still valid so um yeah so it, it's it is i find it amazing that that is by far by far our most popular video and it yeah. just really reflects it reflects the fact the fact that people they love them. They love hedgehogs. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And another thing about uh, because you've got you've got a number of different platforms that you're working with, and uh, so we've discussed YouTube and the the fact you've got this hedgehog uh, related video, but you've also got a a website where actually there's there's more as you you've des described it kind of articles and and specific. Uh, handwritten or, or written documents that walk you through different types of of projects now a lot of those are actually directed towards children what is that something that you've consciously decided for for the wildlife garden project that you want to have these fo focused articles towards kind of helping children or teaching children ways of conservation just in their gardens um yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember it being a conscious choice. It just felt like something that should be done. Really, it was, it was just, you know, um, I mean, a lot of the information on the website is for beginners anyway. So it's, it's very much, um, you know, it, the whole point of it. I wanted it to be really accessible, and, um, I, you know, I wanted it to be the information to be easy to understand for anybody. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do think it's so incredibly important to get kids involved because, you know, kids do have an natural love for, for wildlife and you know living things anyway um and it's just about helping to nurture that really and helping teach them how to kind of care for their environment and and make them realize that the things that they do matter the things that they can you know they can put these small um changes into place and they can see the results with their own eyes and i think that's a really really exciting and special lesson for a child to learn Absolutely, it it and it's it's interesting how kind of some of the educational or some of the focus of conservation tends to be uh, both at at adult and children. But the the children, the focus on children really is important because they can kind of grow with that information and that that knowledge of the conservation, can't they? And it's not just hedgehogs; it's it's a, across all wildlife, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um... I mean, a lot of people kind of sort of creepy crawlies is one that people kind of obviously associate with, yeah. with grown ups, sorry, with children, because, you know, even though, you know, there are lots of grown ups who love creepy crawlies, um, there might be less grown ups who love them than children. But, <laughs> <laughs> but even if they don't love them, they can still appreciate the value of them. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But that's a, it's a really good starting point. And also, uh, the creepy crawly thing, of course, works well for hedgehogs, because if we can encourage kids to, 
love creepy crawlies and encourage them in then that's absolutely that's food for the hedgehogs isn't it so absolutely so if we if we kind of bring those two strands together the the hedgehog specific videos and articles and the the children uh or the focus on on education for children what are some of the very simple things that because i it probably and it definitely is a myth i I know it's a myth, but thinking that conservation is something that happens way out there and it's at a zoo or it's at a nature reserve or, or something managed by someone else. But a lot of conservation can just happen directly in, in the garden and can be reliant on just things that people will actually find within their garden. And so a lot of, of the first steps that, that families or uh, even children for themselves can do, it just would take take advantage of the things that you will simply go outside and find. So what are perhaps some of the things that really might be a focus for a family wanting to bring children into the realm of, of hedgehog conservation? What are some of the things that they might think about or do? Well, the nice thing about um, a lot of the things you can do in wildlife gardening is that a lot of it is really, is really simple and it can be done for free. So it's really sort of family friendly. Um, so one of the things that they could do, um, if, if you know, if, if you were a parent who was looking for some sort of activity to encourage your child to get into um, hedgehogs and and want to care for them, um, then you could almost treat it like a little bit like a scavenger hunt. So, um, just you know, you, you're going around your garden and you're trying to see what you can find that might benefit hedgehogs. So some of those things might be. Um, Right, okay, so it's autumn and, um, you know, the leaves have all fallen off the trees. Like, what do we do with them? Do we stick them in the, the, the bin that's collected by the council? Do we stick them on the compost heap? Or do we create, do we um, actually form those into little piles? Um, because those piles can provide, uh, you know, it's bedding for hedgehogs. It's just a place to hide. Um, and it also uh, attracts all these little creepy crawlies that um, the hedgehog's going to feast on. Um, so... If you treat it a bit like a scavenger hunt, so if you can find piles of leaves, maybe you can create little piles of twigs, uh, maybe you can create a log pile, um, and just all of these materials that are around the garden, maybe, you know, uh, your, your mum or dad's been, you know, trimming the hedges or whatever, and there's some, some bits that all sort of lying around, and you just collect them up and put them in a dark corner, uh, or at the bottom of the garden, or under a hedge, and that's, that's habitat for hedgehogs then. Um, and if you wanted to take it one step further, um, what can you find in your house? So if you've got um, if you've got a pet dog or a pet cat, um, could you put some cat biscuits out or dog biscuits out for the hedgehogs? Um, and can you find maybe a saucer um, around the house that you could then put out water for the hedgehogs? So it's all of the things that are kind of you know those of us who have taken taken interest in things we do for hedgehogs they're really kind of obvious things but you could kind of treat it like a bit of a game a bit of a scavenger hunt what can we find to help hedgehogs and it's all stuff that's free and lying around and it's and it's what you're saying is really bringing kind of the fun element into probably things that maybe as adults we we almost take for granted and you you mention about put out the the, the biscuits for for the hedgehogs but actually making it into a game bringing a little bit of education into it about why hedgehogs might want the biscuits why it's important to put out the saucer of water mm -hmm. is helping the child engaged. get engaged isn't yeah. it definitely yeah just all of those lessons so you know the fact that you're putting it out at night and you talk about the fact that they're nocturnal and all of these things you know each each element of it is a lesson and um, so collecting the twigs in the paths and you can talk about the kind the kinds of um, invertebrates that hedgehogs eat so mm -hmm. maybe whilst you're collecting the leaves and the twigs and and whatnot maybe you find some earwigs and some beetles and you can talk about how this is food for hedgehogs yeah um, so there's so many lessons that can be kind of um taught on the way on that little scavenger hunt Abs absolutely and again the the, the fact uh, i know it's been mentioned a couple of times but the the hedgehog is hedgehog conservation doesn't just look after hedgehogs because the hedgehog is almost at, at the hub of an ecosystem within the garden so that actually like you said everyone loves the cute and cuddly not so cuddly hedgehog mm -hmm. but it, it's just a a way of introducing uh being able to bring the topic of conservation creepy crawlies earwigs bugs beetles 
uh, that type of thing into the realm of the children and again make it make it a bit of a game and educational in the process isn't it yeah definitely if you think about all of the things that we just talked about um you know the the, the fact that all of these things that we're doing to create habitat to create um shelter spots and breeding spots and all the rest of it that that's all attracting all the other um all these invertebrates as well so it's not only helping them but it's also helping other creatures that eat those invertebrates yeah. so frogs and toads and things um, and birds and you know ev everything else that's, that, that that eats creepy crawlies is going to benefit from the things that you do in your garden to help hedgehogs and even the salt of water you know there's going to be other animals that are going to have a little yeah you know, a little drink of that or a snack on the old cat biscuits or whatever <laughs> so. yeah no absolutely absolutely and, and and i think the the other thing potentially for which is really useful in this context with hedgehogs be with hedgehogs being nocturnal there's an element of them being a little bit inaccessible to, to children at some times especially when it's not light and the, the hedgehogs aren't waking up at kind of half past seven in the evening and so being able to to a degree it's a little bit difficult for a parent to be talking about all of this without the, the subject of conversation present but at the same time it's it's quite nice to introduce it through these games and and almost making it fun isn't it being able to discuss the the hedgehogs even though they're not present physically at the time yeah definitely i think i think it, you know if you're sort of talking about all of these ideas and um you know just the fact that it's an animal that comes out at night is exciting in itself to a kid yeah. hopefully. um but you know there are things that you can do as well so um you know, obviously not everybody would be able to afford um, a, a, a trail cam or anything, um, but you can also, you can look out for signs, um, you know, you might, you might find, you might find footprints, you might find poo, you might find hedgehog poo, yep. and so that can be yep. another thing that you do where you, you, you look at, you know, there's all kinds of charts that you can get online um, to identify poo, so if you find some, you know, near where you think the hedgehog might have been, then that's that's the, that's the second thing that you can be doing the next day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what do we what do we think left this <laughs> little present for us? You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's, exactly. You know, that's thing, so. Exactly. Laura, that's absolutely brilliant, and I really appreciate your time and, and coming on. And I know that you're exceptionally busy doing your your day job while still trying to run wildlife garden project and then taking time out to to talk to me. But I really appreciate it, and thank you so much for your input and really helpful kind of useful tips that that parents can can have and and employ to get children involved and and make this hedgehog conservation a whole family effort as opposed to just the parents, so to speak, or the adults. So thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's been lovely to chat. And uh, yeah, I love what you're doing. I think it's, I think just, I think everyone should be able to get behind hedgehogs. So, so yeah, loving what you're doing. <laughs> thank you so much. And thanks for your time. All right, thanks a lot. It really is true to say that conservation can begin at home and it can start right in your backyard, in your garden or within your allotment. And it makes no difference how big or small that garden might be. There's a tangible difference that you can make to wildlife in that space, not just to hedgehogs, but to birds and amphibians and even the creepy crawly insects upon which they may all feed. So it's something to really consider to get out and take care of the wildlife in the space that you look after. It's not something for other people to take care of. It's not necessarily just for our nature reserves and the David Attenboroughs and the Hugh Warwicks of the world. Everyone can make a difference and the whole family can get involved in things that are not very expensive or, to be honest, are probably free and cheap. As always, you can find out more about Laura and the Wildlife Garden Project by looking in the video description below and you'll find all kinds of links to both the website and the YouTube channel and the various projects that you and the family can get involved in in your own backyard, not just for hedgehogs, but for all wildlife that may be visiting your yard. Until next time, from myself, Mike, you take care. Bye bye.